่แขกรับเชิญท่านต่อไปแน่นอนครับคนนี้เป็นคนที่ทั้งโลกรู้จักคว้าตำแหน่งมิชชูนิเวอร์สในปี2005จากนั้นเป็นต้นมาก็ใช้ชีวิตอยู่ที่เมืองไทยเพราะเคยถามเธอว่าทำไมเธอถึงตัดสินใจอยู่ที่นี่เธอบอกว่านี่คือประเทศที่สวยงามและงดงามที่สุดแล้วผมมั่นใจนะครับว่าความคิดของเธอกับความสวยนะ่ะน่าจะมากพอๆกันเลยทุกคนครับ ladies and gentlemen big round of applause for Natalie g a l a b o a To me, success means having the freedom of my time and freedom of choices. I don't want to be a billionaire in financial terms, but I want to be a time billionaire. To me, having the time to choose what I want to do with my life, what I want to do with my work, what I want to do with my spare time is so important. So to me, success means freedom. Audio Jungle. Nice to see everybody again today. How are you all? Good, good. So, as you all saw, I am from Miss Universe, and I'm not here to talk about how to win the crown, although that's part of it. It's a part of today's presentation. What I am going to talk today about is how to be a winner in life. Who wants to know how to be a winner in life? Who? Who wants to be a winner? Who, who thinks he's there already a winner? Who is winning? All right, I see some hands. I like that attitude. But for those of you who are not sure yet, I'm going to give you some personal stories as well as some tips on how to be a winner. But first, I want to do some exercise with you. First, I would like us to fake win. Okay? So even if you don't feel like you're a winner yet. What you can do is simply fake it until you make it. I call this the victory pose, the I am winning pose. I would like all of you to stand up, please, and I want all of you to do the victory pose. Okay? I really want you to feel like you're a winner right now, like you're standing on top of a mountain, like you're standing on top of a podium. As if somebody's giving you a medal or an award, and what I can see right now is most people, when they're standing with their hands up like that, they're smiling. All right, you can all sit down. What I really want to illustrate with this pose, with this victory pose, is that we're actually biologically wired as human beings to feel happy when we stand in the victory pose. When we have our hands up, and you want to know why? It's scientifically proven. There's some research that came out of university in Canada a few years ago that studied blind athletes. And do you want to know what they found? Any time that a blind athlete had won a medal, won a race, automatically their hands went up. Why is that? They had never seen what it's like to win. They don't know. They're blind, right? So why is it that the blind athletes? Do the victory pose, because we are preconditioned for that. We are biologically wired as human beings to put our hands up, thrust our chest out, raise our head up, and it floods our brain with serotonin, dopamine, endorphins, and we feel happy. We feel energized. We feel amazing. And I call this victory pose. For a reason, because you can actually do this every single day, every morning upon waking up. When you wake up in the morning, all you have to do is simply stand in front of the mirror, do the victory pose, and instantly, just like that, you get a hit of serotonin into your brain, and instantly you feel like a winner, and it sets your day up. So try it; it's a very effective way. You can even put on some music as you do it. Or you can dance around in your living room. It works. Don't worry about looking silly. I know it may sound a bit silly, but it works. It's the same with exercise, as you all know. Exercise gives us that dose of endorphins as well. 
same thing, but not all of us have time to exercise. This is a fantastic way to do it. So I want to ask all of you right now, what is your definition of winning in life? Certainly everyone has their own definition. Is it this, getting out of a fancy limousine, about to get on a private jet? Think about what is yours. Perhaps it's to live on a farm and have tons of kids and just live out your days being surrounded by loved ones. Is that your definition of success and your definition of winning? Perhaps it's to be on the red carpet, being adored by millions of fans, wearing fancy designer dresses and having recognition and fame. Does that sound like winning to you? Maybe it's to fall in love and live happily ever after with your loved one, right? Being an athlete, winning races, getting gold medals, traveling the world, exploring countries, getting to as many countries in the world as possible, or simply relaxing at the beach, owning a little tiki bar somewhere in the Pacific, and enjoying time relaxing in the sun with your friends. Or maybe it's this, winning the crown, right? Funny enough, I'm standing at the same spot right now that I won the crown 13 years ago, right here at M Impact Arena. 13 years ago, I was crowned right here. Thank you. But this is not my definition of winning in life, by far. I would like to ask all of you to introspect right now, and I'm going to do another little exercise with you to find out what is it for you that the word winning means. We're going to do a marketing psychology exercise. It's a color exercise. And I want all of you to close your eyes for just a few minutes. All of you, it's okay. Close your eyes. And I'm going to guide you through it. A little bit of visualization here. You've already learned that from Jack Canfield and Dr. Joe yesterday. And imagine yourself at your peak state. Imagine yourself at, your, at the top level of your game, winning in life, when everything you want, all of your dreams have come true. Everything that you've always dreamed about has happened. Imagine that you're happy. Imagine you're fulfilled. You're with your loved ones, and everything you want in one moment, you have it right now. Is there any color associated to that feeling? Do you see any color standing out to you as the winning color of your winning life? Is it gold, silver, or metallic color? Is it white? Is it black? Perhaps it's red, green, orange, or purple. What color do you see most vividly when you think about yourself winning and being successful and being happy? All right. Now, I want you to go ahead and open your eyes. And keeping that color in mind, you can look at this chart and see if you find any of those colors on this chart. And remember, this is just a marketing psychology exercise that brands actually use to identify what color they're going to use for their brand. And it's not to say that if you picked gold and silver that your definition of success is confidence, luxury, and prosperity. It simply means that whatever Whatever association you have to that color, that's what it means to you. I'll give you an example. My color of success is blue, ocean blue. Why do I feel like that? Ocean blue, because for me, as you saw in that video before, it means freedom. That is my life purpose. That is what I consider winning, when I have freedom of my time, freedom of my choices, when I can do anything I want with my life. And I associate blue to the color of the ocean, the color of the open sky. And when I'm successful, and when I have that freedom, I want to be by the ocean. I want to be sailing the open ocean and just enjoying that freedom. 
So that is the color of success for me, is blue. Can I get somebody's interpretation and somebody's color of their success? Anybody wants to volunteer? A couple of people? You can just shout it out. Yellow. OK. <laughs> so I can, I can see all kinds of colors. And why do you think you hear all, all of these colors? Because there's not just one definition of success, right? There's not just one definition. It's very individual to you. Winning and success pertains to the individual. So if you said orange, perhaps that means you like luxury, creativity, and wisdom. If you picked black, maybe that means you love power, influence, and prestige. If you picked white, innovation, purity, new beginnings. There are no right or wrong answers. It's whatever it means to you. So keep that in mind, keep that color in mind until later on because we're going to do something else. So before I get into my five tips on how to be a winner, which by the way, I have written a book called I Am Winning, which is available on Amazon right now and you can go ahead and buy it now. And you can read all of my tips over there. But before I get into the five tips that I've chosen for today, I want to tell you a story. And this is a story of how all of this started for me, how I started using law of attraction, how I started using visualization, how I started using goal setting. And I had no idea about the secret, about any of this. I never watched a single motivational speaker yet. It all started for me when I decided to compete for Miss Canada pageant. And I was 23 years old, and I submitted my application, hoping for the best. And the national director of Miss Canada, Mr. Dennis Davila, who is here in the audience today, I can't see where he is, but he's somewhere over here, which is so great for him to hear this, because he really inspired me to do this. When we came into the competition, and all of the contestants were there, eagerly hoping and waiting to hear what Dennis is going to tell us. He said to us, I want you to go home, take out a notebook, and on one side of the page, I want you to write all of your accomplishments, everything that you're proud of, everything that you've achieved, everything that you're proud about yourself, anything that you can think of that you've achieved and all of your accomplishments. And on the other side, I want you to write down your goals. It could be this year's goals, it could be your immediate goals, or future goals, or even lifetime goals. So he told us to go ahead and do that. So I went home, and I did just that. And I brought my notebook to show you, because this has become a symbol for me. This is the notebook that I use all the time. Whenever I'm feeling lost, whenever I'm feeling like my life is not going in the right direction, I take to my success journal, and I start writing the same exercise over and over again, because it's so effective. And I don't know if you can see that, and I'll ask if the camera can zoom in. But what I wrote was not a lot. I was only 20, I think I was even only 21 years old when I first started. And I wrote down only five accomplishments. Having won a gymnastics competition, finished music school, finished third year of university, becoming an office manager, which was my summer job, living on my own and being independent, having confidence, drive, and passion, and being a positive person. That's it. That's all the accomplish accomplishments I've had so far up to that time. So if you're thinking, well, I don't really have anything that I want to write, believe me, this is enough. Anything that you're happy about yourself, anything that you're proud about yourself. And on the other side, I just wrote down some goals. Win Miss Universe, Win Miss Universe Canada, win the Toronto Regional Pageant, and a few other goals like become a project manager, own my own company, travel the world, and become a great public speaker, and maybe learn another language. Those are all the goals that I had, but I followed Dennis's advice, and I decided to do just that. Then I went further. I decided that I'm going to make a plan of action. How am I actually going to win this universe? In order to do that, I need to win the regional pageant first. Then I need to win the Miss Universe Canada pageant. And only then I can go to compete for Miss Universe. So I wrote out pages and pages of 
action plans, to-do lists. And you can see I was putting little check marks on everything. I was literally writing like a business proposal because I decided to approach it just like a business idea, like a business project. This was the biggest chance of my life at that point. Why wouldn't I do everything I possibly can to make it happen? So I wrote out a step-by-step -step plan. What do I have to do? As detailed as possible. And every single day, I was working very, very hard and doing, as Jack said, five or more things in order to achieve my dream. And I was putting check marks every day as soon as I completed each task. Check mark, check mark, check mark. And so as I won the Toronto regional pageant, I put a check mark there. I competed for the Miss Universe Canada pageant for the first time. I didn't win. I was in the top five, but I didn't win that, that year. But that didn't derail me from my goal. I decided to regroup and continue again the following year. I came back, did exactly the same thing, wrote out my accomplishments, wrote out my dreams and my goals, made an action plan, same thing. Check mark, check mark, check mark. That year, I won Miss Universe Canada. And I went on to Thailand, and I won Miss Universe, because exactly the same thing. I did all of my planning, all of my, all of my goals, all of my to-do list in exactly the same way. And after I won Miss Universe, I, of course, got flown to New York City, and I didn't even get a chance to come back to my apartment in Toronto. And the funny thing is that when I came back a few months later to pick up some of my things, I found this journal, and I looked at the goals, the first goals that I wrote, and I had check marks already next to the two pageants that I had won, and I proudly put a check mark next to Win This Universe. And it just gave me goosebumps, the fact that I was actually checking off such an amazing goal. And how did this happen? Do you think this was an accident? Do you think it was just pure luck? I don't believe so. I think it was really the goal setting and the planning and visualizing and all of those things that both Dr. Joe and Jack have been talking about. I didn't know what it was, but I did it, and it's proof that it works. So I definitely have to say a big thank you to Dennis for teaching me this fantastic formula of how to achieve anything you want in life. And this success journal, it's always going to be with me. Nowadays, I always write down everything that I want, and I continue doing my plans, and I keep putting check marks. So what else do people want in life when they think of winning? They want titles, they want degrees, they want money, fame, maybe Instagram followers, right? But they also want love. Who here thinks that having love is winning? I couldn't agree more. For me, love is a big part of my life, and one of the reasons why I consider myself winning is because of my wonderful partner, my wonderful husband. In fact, he's the one who inspired me to create the title for my book, I'm Winning, and I'll tell you a little story about that as well. It was right after our daughter was born, maybe about nine months after she was born, and we went down to Koh Samui here in Thailand. I was doing a little DJ gig at Nikki Beach Koh Samui, and I finished that, and we were sitting down watching this gorgeous sunset. Just imagine the scenery. We're watching this beautiful sunset. We're sitting together in beach chairs, listening to the sounds of the waves, the beautiful music for sunset. We were drinking fresh coconuts, which are incredible in Thailand. One of the reasons why I live in Thailand is because of the fresh coconuts. They're so amazing. One of the reasons. So we were sitting there, and Maya was right in the, in the middle, our daughter Maya. And she had a coconut in her lap, and she was just being really cute and doing her thing. And Dean, my husband, looked over at me, and he jokingly, just with a smirk in his eye, he said, babe, are we winning or what? And 
all of a sudden I was just thinking to myself, yes, we are winning. We are so winning right now. And now it has become sort of like a, um, an inside family joke between us. Whenever we go out to a fancy event, whenever we take a trip, or even if we're just cuddled up on home, at home on the couch, we joke to each other, babe, we're winning. And what does that mean to us? It's not because we're billionaires. It's not because we have millions of followers on Instagram. It's not because we have possessions which we are, we do have certain things, and we're very blessed, and we're very grateful for them. But we certainly don't have as much as some other seemingly more successful people have, right? But what we do have is the fact that we can enjoy the present moment, we can enjoy our surroundings and the little things in life, like that glorious sunset, the sound of the waves, the coconut, being together as a family. We are so grateful for that, and because of that, we are winning. That's why we're winning. And of course, I decided to write a book about that, and that's how it all happened. But I want to tell you another story about how I attracted love into my life. This is another interesting story. I wasn't always lucky in love. As many of you know, I had gone through a very public divorce in my life. And at a certain point, I decided that if I can use the power of my mind and this law of attraction, or whatever it was I called it at that time, to win Miss Universe, to do well in business, to do well in work, I can certainly use the same approach to attract love into my life. So I decided to do just that. Took out my success journal once again, and I decided to create a picture of my perfect man somebody that I'm going to be so happy when I'm with him, somebody that I'm going to be so proud to have in my life. So I sat there, and I kid you not, I wrote a five-page list. Five pages, single space. No joke. <laughs> I mean, I really know what I want. What can I say? So I created almost like this perfect character in my head. It was almost like a character of an, out of a novel. Somebody that I would imagine in my, in the, my mind's eye, and I didn't see a face. It wasn't like I saw a face or anything like that. I had a feeling. What kind of person is it gonna be? What kind of personality will he have? What kind of values does he espouse? What's his compatibility with me? What are his interests, his hobbies? How do we get along? All of those things I wrote down in as much detail as possible, very, very precise. It's five pages long. <laughs> and wouldn't you know it, just months after creating this amazing list, Dean walked into my life, and he's 99.999% .999 that man that I imagined. It's amazing. It really is. So whenever people ask me, well, how do you find love? I kind of know what I want, but I don't know what I want. Get as detailed as possible. No, how can you attract the person that you want if you don't even know who that is? If you don't have an idea of who that person is? Of course, they're not going to show up into your life. You don't know. You haven't sent that signal out to the universe. You haven't even told yourself. So who are you looking for? Be detailed as much as possible. But I didn't stop there. I thought that if I'm going to attract the most amazing man into my life, I have to be the most amazing version of myself first, right? Because the most amazing man deserves the most amazing woman. Isn't that right? So I wrote a page for my perfect self as well. I wrote a list three pages long. Not as long, but definitely still very, very detailed. And I wrote out exactly who I want to be. And this is a great exercise for you to try because as Dr. Joe was saying and Jack, it's, there's so much self-improvement that we can constantly do. It's, the work is never finished. We're never, we're never finished evolving. We always have to continue improving ourselves. And no matter what level of success you think you've reached, there's always something that more that you can do. 
and more that you can improve. So I absolutely encourage you, if you want to find that perfect person, be that perfect person first. Make that list. Find out what are your values, what are your personality traits, what are your interests, what is your, the perfect version of you, what do they do when they wake up in the morning. Make a list of all of those qualities that you want for yourself. All right, so now I am going to tell you some tips on how to be a winner. All right. Is it working? Oh, here we go. Oops. I've gone too far. All right, so tip number one. By the way, this is all in my book, but I'm just giving you five most important tips for today. If you want to be a winner, you have to surround yourself by winners, too. Why is that? Because positive thinking and positive energy is very contagious. So is lack of positive energy and negative thinking. Super contagious. If you want to be a winner yourself, you cannot allow anybody to penetrate your circle. You have to surround yourself by people who uplift you, who make you want to level up, who inspire you, who motivate you to be better. And this is one of the most important things that I can tell you today. Probably that's why I put it as a number one tip. That's how you start. You start by only allowing people who uplift you, inspire you, and motivate you into your circle. Everybody else, you need to either cut them out or limit your time spent with them. As harsh as that sounds, this is going to improve your life 100%. I've had to do that as well in my life. Unfortunately, I had to cut out certain people out of my life. And as soon as I did, incredible things started happening. My career started taking off. Why is that? Because I wasn't limited by their limiting beliefs. Most of the time when I was hanging out with people who were saying, I can't, I don't know how, why is everything so difficult? I was adopting that negative energy from those people. And that's not what you want if you want to be a winner. As soon as you eliminate those people from your life and focus on building positive energy, your life takes off. One exercise I would like to recommend for you to do, I do it about once a year, it's called a life audit. And all you have to do is write down a list of all the people you have in your life, or maybe top 10 people you spend the most time with. You write down all of their names, and then you put either a plus or a minus next to their name. A plus, if they make you feel happy, if they encourage you, if they uplift you, if they inspire you and make you want to get better and improve yourself. And a minus for people who do the opposite, who always criticize you or others, who gossip, who fear monger, who bring negative energy into your life. That's a minus. And then it's simple. The people who have a plus next to their name, you spend more time with them. The people who have a minus next to their name, you either completely cut them out or simply limit your time spent with them. One of the hardest things to do is, of course, do that for your family members. And I'm by no way, in no way suggesting that you have to cut out family members out of your life. But you have to draw a boundary. If a close family member is causing you negative energy and negative thinking, you simply have to shut your mind to that. And you have to limit your time. Talk to them about your daily life, but don't get into the details of your life with them. Okay? So that is probably the most important thing that I can tell you if you want to be a winner. <clears throat> All right. So tip number two is win your mornings. What do I mean by win your mornings? What usually happens when you get up in the morning? For most people. As soon as you open your eyes, most likely you go, your hand goes over to the nightstand, grabs your phone, and puts it in front of your face. Right? For most people. I'm not saying it's you, but for most people. 
and they get lost in that matrix of other people's lives, of news, of negativity, of gossip, and all the things that don't matter to you and your dreams. Why would you do that to yourself? Those first moments when you wake up in the morning, they're the most precious moments for you. Because those are the times that you can actually spend on thinking about what you want, visualizing your goals, and improving yourself, right? <coughs> Excuse me. So I highly recommend that when you first wake up in the morning, do not take your phone, don't even bring the phone into your bedroom with you. Just simply spend those first, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes or half an hour doing something that I call empower hour. And I know Jack has already talked a lot about that. I think he called it the hour of power or something like that. Well, I call it the empower hour. And you can design it yourself. You can make your own empower hour, whatever it is that you want to do, something that serves you and your dreams only. Nothing to do with anybody else. So what you do, you wake up in the morning, you can maybe take a look at your goals, make some adjustments to your goals, you can do some exercise, you can take your vitamins, you can meditate, you can do yoga, you can do stretching, you can read books, not your newsfeed. <laughs> and you can simply just focus on you and your goals. That is probably the most important thing. One of the things that I love to do, even before I open my eyes, this is what I do. I start visualizing my most immediate goal, what I want to happen in my life. And it's such a beautiful time to do that because you're still in that moment between being asleep and being awake, and your subconscious mind is still open, right? So it's a perfect time to use visualization. Because when you visualize yourself doing what you want to do, when you visualize yourself <clears throat> achieving your goals, all of a sudden your mind starts taking all of that in and it becomes almost like reality for your mind. <clears throat> I have a bit of a sore throat, <laughs> so it's really getting dry. So stop wasting your time on your phone. Stop giving away the energy to something that doesn't matter to you. Make sure you spend that first 20 minutes or half an hour on you and your goals. That's how you win your mornings. And of course, don't forget to do the victory pose, right? Right. All right. My tip number three on how to be a winner. If you want to live a winning life, one of the best things you can do is limit your use of social media. Yesterday, Jack talk, talked about stop, using, stop watching TV, right? Do you remember that? He said, that's the best way to kill your dreams. Social media is the new TV. I mean, who watches TV anyway, right? We're all on social media all day long. And it's one of the worst things that you can do for yourself because Yes, social media is very helpful for keeping in touch with people, for promoting your brand. That's great. But what do we usually do on social media? We scroll, right, mindlessly. It's almost like we're addicted to seeing what is out there. What are our friends doing? How many likes did I get? How many messages? How many notifications? In fact, from what I understand, there's research coming out that we're so addicted to our phones, we actually get a dopamine kick every time we look at our phone. It's addictive and it's sapping your energy, it's sapping your positive thinking. Why is that? Because when you look on social media, what do you usually see? Besides you know, pictures of your friend's food and pets and babies and selfies, you see a lot of negative things. You see news coming out about horrible things happening in the world, 
that causes you to feel bad. You also see people's unrealistic pictures that they post on social media, so you start comparing yourself to them. So automatically you're feeling, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not successful enough, I'm not beautiful enough, whatever it is. Social media feel, makes everybody feel like that. And of course, it takes away your time. You're simply not as productive as you should be. What I've done is I've deleted certain social media apps from my phone, and I use social media exclusively for keeping in touch with my friends through direct messaging and to post things about my brand. That's the only thing I use social media for. And you know what? It's been one of the best things that I've ever done in my life. It really has helped take my life to another level. And I suggest you do the same. You'll see a significant increase in your personal satisfaction, in your self-confidence. You'll see that you have more time. And you will not even miss it, believe me. Another thing you can try to do is have one phone where you have all of your social media and only keep it at home and give yourself time to use that phone when you schedule it into your daily routine. But don't take that phone out with you because you'll be tempted to constantly, whenever you're waiting or you're stuck in traffic, you're always on your phone checking that news feed. Believe me, that's not what you want to be doing. If you want to be a top producer, you want to be a game changer, if you want to be a winner, do not use social media for scrolling and just checking up on what's going on in the news feed. Tip number four. Highly, highly recommend this. Meditate. How many people here know what meditation is? Well, probably everybody, right? <laughs> How many people actually meditate? Oh, okay, that's pretty good. How many people do it daily? A little bit less, but still pretty good. Meditation is something we don't get taught in schools and we don't know much about if we come, especially from the Western world. But meditation is an ancient secret for a reason. You know, meditation is something that really has a positive impact on our health on our stress levels, on so many things. I'm sure you've heard, you've all heard of the amazing benefits that meditation can provide to you, right? You get better mindfulness, you get better awareness, you get a sense of balance and inner peace, reduce stress and increase health. You increase your productivity and energy as well when you meditate. So why don't we meditate if we know all of this? Why is it so difficult? I couldn't do it for years. I tried and I failed over and over again. Until I decided that that's it. I'm taking control over myself and over my schedule. I'm going to make meditation a must. Not a should, but a must. And what happens when you actually take an activity and turn it from a should to a must, it becomes unavoidable. It's something like I should eat, I should sleep, and I should meditate. So now every morning when I wake up, and I try to wake up at 6 a.m. every day, I do half an hour of meditation daily. And it has taken my life to another level, I can tell you that. I can manage the stress better. I can feel how energized I am for the day on the days that I meditate. I actually get so much more done when I meditate. Do you guys want to try it right now? Yeah? Okay. So. I know it can be very difficult because we have so many thoughts constantly running through our mind. It's so difficult to meditate. And I know, believe me, I struggle with it still. I've only been meditated, meditating for about a month. But I went on a meditation retreat a few weeks ago, and I got taught some very interesting techniques that can help you. So I'm going to share them with you now. Go ahead and close your eyes, and I'm going to guide you through. First of all, just close your eyes and take one deep breath. In and out. Maybe take two more of these deep breaths. In and out. And one more time. In and out. 
Now these three breaths were probably easy to focus on, but what happens is when you start focusing on your breath, the longer you go, the more likely your mind is going to start getting in the way of that. It's going to start all that chatter, all the chatter in your head is going to come up again. And that's okay. You're not here to stop your mind. You're not here to tell your mind, go away. You're here to observe your mind. You're simply here to watch your thoughts come and go without judgment, without rushing. You simply watch what happens in your mind and watch your thoughts coming and going. Observe your mind. And every once in a while, just keep bringing your attention back to your breathing. Now, another technique that they told me in meditation is the best way to meditate is to use your belly breathing. So put your hand, your right hand, on your belly and watch your belly rise under your hand. Every time you breathe in, the belly should rise. And when you exhale, the belly will fall. So just keep breathing naturally without forcing over and over again and observe your mind. What is happening? What do you, where does your mind drift to? Where do you see your mind going to? Keep breathing and keep observing. Now, another thing to try, and this is what they call Vipassana meditation, is to focus your attention on the area right under your nostrils. It could be the nostrils themselves, or it could be that area above your upper lip. And every time you breathe in, you feel how the nostrils contract, and every time you breathe out, you feel how they expand. So try paying attention to that. This is what's called Vipassana meditation. It's a very ancient technique, and it's a wonderful technique. It's very difficult to get used to it, but the more you do it, the better you get at it. So just keep breathing. Make sure your belly keeps going in and out. Pay attention to your nostrils, and just observe your mind. Observe what's happening. Now what I want you to do is try a little bit of body awareness meditation. And with body awareness, you can do that literally anywhere. You could be at work, you could be at home, you could be backstage somewhere, you could be before a meeting in your office or in your car. What you can try is just being aware of every single part of your body, starting at your feet. Think about how your feet are pressed on the floor, how they feel inside of your shoes, moving up your legs. Are your muscles tight or are they relaxed? Your knees, your thighs, your hips, the belly going in and out. How does your chest feel? Your shoulders, down your arms, your hands and your fingertips. Just bring your attention to every single part of your body. Then moving up towards your neck, your throat, chin, your facial muscles. Try to relax your facial muscles. Try putting a little smile on your face, like a gentle smile. That always feels nice. How does it feel, the top of your head, your hair? Just bring your attention one by one to every single part of your body. That's what's called body awareness. And we forget to do this. We forget to do this in our daily busy lives because we rush from one thing to another. We always have Instagram and Facebook on, on our minds. How about we bring the attention to ourselves, our breathing, our bodies? This is a fantastic exercise to relax, to reduce stress, and to energize yourself. And believe me, if you do this every single morning, you are going to see a difference. 
All right, go ahead and open your eyes now. How do you feel? <laughs> Can I hear? <laughs> Some people feel sleepy, that's okay, that means you're relaxed. But pe mostly people feel good because that really, putting that attention onto your, onto your body and that body awareness connects us to ourselves. And if we don't do that, if we're always thinking, 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 our mind is drifting, we get disconnected from our body. And then stress builds up, we get all kinds of health problems, and we just feel tense, right? So practice mindfulness, practice meditation every single day, and I guarantee you, it's going to work some magic. And finally, my last tip for how to be a winner for today is create your winning vision. And yesterday, Jack talked a lot about goal setting, and this is similar to that. And I'm sure you've already had all of your goals written down from yesterday, and that's great. But I want you to go back to your color of success, the color of winning that you had pictured in your mind. Do you remember what that color was? I want you to create a vision of your perfect ideal life the life that you would be proud to have, the life that you would be happy to live. Let's come back and in our mind's eye, think of that color and that winning vision that we have thought about previously. And let's think about all the elements that goes into this life. Who are you with? What are you doing? How do you wake up every morning? Are you waking up every morning with purpose, knowing exactly what you have to do, full of energy, and going to work, doing something meaningful, productive, something that helps millions of other people? Are you surrounded by your family, your loved ones? Do you have a partner in your life? Do you have kids? Where do you live? Are you somewhere in the mountains? Are you by the beach? Where are you? Where do you live in your ideal version of your life? What else are you doing? Are you pursuing your passions and hobbies? Do you have time for that? Are you exercising? What's the picture of your perfect body, your perfect weight? Think of all of these elements that encompass your perfect life. And we're not going to do it today because we don't have much time or the resources, but I want to show you something interesting. I watched one video that talked about drawing a picture of your perfect life. And just like a kid, I got out my box of crayons, I sat down with a piece of paper, and I drew this. This is the picture of my perfect life. So even if you don't have that goal, that specific goal that you think, oh, well, I just don't know what my goal is. I don't know what I'm supposed to be striving for. Why don't you strive for this? Make your own picture of your perfect life. Design your own reality and then put it somewhere where you can see it every single day. And as you can see, I'm not an artist. This is horrible drawing, but it doesn't matter. It's only for you. It's to give you that emotion that when you think, when you look at this, you feel happy. You feel inspired. You feel uplifted. You feel like, I'll do just about anything to have this life. I did this picture right around the time my daughter Maya was born, and my life at the time didn't look like this. But about a year later, after I had it in the fridge and I saw it every single day, I looked at it about a year later and I was like, wow, I'm living my desired life. And get detailed. You know, I've got, obviously, Dean, myself, and Maya walking on the beach, which is something where we want to be. I even have how many kilograms I want to weigh. <laughs> hey, why not, right? I have flying around the world, traveling, doing charity work, doing a YouTube channel about traveling, working and bursting with energy and creativity and ideas. And out of my window, I see an ocean. As you can see, there's a lot of blue on my, on my picture because blue is my color of success, my color of winning. I got my perfect home right here with an organic garden, my awesome friends, DJing as a hobby, and there you have it. That's my perfect life. And 
I really encourage you to do the same. Why wouldn't you design your own perfect life? What do you have to lose? Just sit down. You don't even have to make a list of goals like I did. You can simply do this. It's a fantastic and very effective exercise because your mind is going to take a picture of this and always have it there. So whenever opportunities come, you're going to grab them. And it's going to motivate you to work harder and to take more opportunities. So is everyone going to go home and do this? Yes? This is so much fun, guys. Really, really a lot of fun. I love doing this exercise. And I encourage everybody to keep doing this exercise over and over again, once a year or once every two years, whenever you feel like it. It's fantastic. And there you have it. Um, those are my five tips. But before I finish, I want to tell you one more tip. And it's a very, very important tip. If you want to be successful, you really need to focus your attention not on the what. Remember Jack yesterday was saying? He said, sorry, he said, don't focus on the how, right? He said, forget the how. If you want to achieve your goal, don't worry, how am I going to do it? How am I going to achieve it? Focus on what it is exactly and know your why. Why do you want to achieve it? Because why is the biggest motivating factor you'll ever need in your life. If you know your why, that reason, that big grand reason that you'll do just about anything to make your goal a reality, if you have that why and your why is strong enough, you will achieve that goal. I always say to people when they come to me and they say, well, Natalie, you know, I just don't think I have what it takes to have my winning life and reach my goal because I don't think I'm smart enough. I think I'm just lazy. I just don't want to do anything, you know. But I always tell people, there are no lazy people in the world. There are only people whose why is not strong enough. If your why is compelling enough, you will do it. For most people, the why can be their family. For instance, for me, my biggest why, of course, is my daughter. When I think about my daughter and everything that I want to do for her, the business that I'm building, the life that I'm building, the program, the empowerment program for young people that I'm building. I think of my daughter, Maya, because I'm doing it for her. I want her to grow up with confidence, with positive thinking, not being attached to her phone. That's why I'm creating all of these things, because I want her to know this. So when she grows up, she doesn't have to try and figure it out by herself. She'll al already have all those lessons for her. So start thinking about what is your why? But make sure that it's so strong that when you think about it, you get goosebumps on your skin, that you feel emotions, you have strong feelings when you think about that reason. That's the only way that you're going to achieve your goal, is if you know exactly what you want and why you want to achieve it. Thank you so much. I would love to take some questions if anybody has any at this moment. Can we turn up the lights? There you go. Anybody has any questions at all about how I won this universe, maybe? <laughs> I know it's usually a very popular subject. <laughs> any questions about how I wrote out my goals, what exactly I put on my perfect man list, maybe? Yes? What question do you have? Okay. The question is, how long did it take between the time when I made my list and I met my perfect man? <laughs> Very popular question. Everybody wants to know, how long does it take? There is no one answer. It could take a week or it could take a few years. It's all, it all depends on how committed you are to making this list as detailed as possible and also believing that this perfect person exists. Because what happens is we can make the most detailed list in the world. We can make a 100-page list. But if we don't believe that it's possible to meet this perfect person, it's not going to happen. It's as simple as that. So 
what I recommend is for you to start thinking what's important to you. What kind of qualities in a person that you find the most attractive, that you find the most valuable? When you write those down, take a look at them and ask yourself, do I believe that this person exists? If there's even a single doubt in your mind, you have to go back to the drawing board and start again. But usually, for most people, I think it takes a few months, maybe a few weeks, I don't know. <laughs> for me, I think it was about two or three months before Dean walked into my life. But I, I want to stress that I didn't just write my list and put it away and forget about it. I was working on that list for probably two months, <laughs> refining it, editing it, changing things, making it perfect. I would look at it every single day and just think, oh, I don't like this, I'm going to change this word. I'm going to add a little bit more here. I'm going to change this, I'm going to delete that. So I was obsessively looking at this list and thinking, I'm going to manifest this perfect man into my life. So it took a couple of months. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes, please. Or you never have any. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just ridiculous. Of course, I have disappointments. <laughs> the question is, how do I handle rejection, failure, and disappointments? Well, the good thing to remind yourself is that everybody, no matter who they are, if they're a top-level CEO, if they're a rock star, or whoever they are, we all have disappointments. So just remember, if you're facing one, you're not alone and somebody has gone through probably the same thing as you have. The next thing to do is try to learn from the disappointment. So first acknowledge it, make sure you understand how it makes you feel, and then try to see what can you learn from this? How can you improve yourself? Because at the end of the day, we're disappointed with ourselves, right? When a disappointment or failure happens, we usually, sometimes we blame other people, but ultimately we always blame ourselves. I wasn't good enough, I wasn't smart enough, I wasn't talented enough. So what I do is I try to take this as an opportunity to improve myself. I write down what I could have done better, or what I could have learned or improved, and I actually go ahead and I learn that new skill, I learn what I have to, and then I hope for the best for the next time. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Yes, please. Yes. Um, what, what, you, what would you do if you're um, facing like hard times in your life, like when you like fall to the lowest point in your life and you like don't know what to do, okay. like really upset? So if, did everybody hear that? The question is, what do you do when you fall into a really tough time in your life, like you hit the lowest point of your life? I do this. <laughs> I simply go back to my success journal, I start a blank page, and I start writing things down again. Remember, on one side of the page, you write down your accomplishments, your achievements, and everything that you're proud of. Because everybody, no matter who they are, has something to be proud of. We all have our unique talents, we have all our unique abilities, and we all have something that we can say, wow, I'm really good at this. Everybody. I'm sure you have it too, right? And as you saw, when I first started doing this exercise, I didn't have much to be proud of. I just had things like being a positive person and living on my own and finishing third year university. The point of this exercise is that not only will that give you a confidence boost and uplift you a little bit because you're going to look at all of your amazing things that you have done, but also there may be some areas in that list that you can focus on where it may lead you to your purpose, where you may fi find out, okay, I'm good at public speaking, so what can I do with that? Maybe that's what I'm meant to do. <coughs> so, <coughs> go back to your success journal every time you are at a low point, and I do this about once a year. I like to go away by myself for a few days, either to a meditation retreat, or I go to the island somewhere I feel really good, and you can just be anywhere in a place that you feel good. You can go back home to your family home, if that's your happy place. Take your success journal, write down on one side 
your accomplishments, and on the other side, your goals and your dreams. And then start working on it, and you'll see all of a sudden you went from your low and you're going to start climbing up again. <clears throat> Thank you. Do I have any more questions? Yes, please. I have one more question. Uh, you said you write the list of your perfect man, and then you write another list of uh, the perfect of yourself. Yes. So you get uh, the second list done first before you meet your perfect man, or like what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think it was a w <laughs> it was a work in progress because my perfect self is. I'm still not my perfect self. <laughs> I still have things that I want to improve about myself. So it's a work in progress. It never ends. I think I did those two lists about the same time. I did the perfect man first, then maybe a few weeks later I did the perfect self. And as I said, my list keeps adding to, to my perfect self more and more items, right? So it's, it never ends. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I see. Kike, right back there. Yeah, a microphone is coming to you. Test. <laughs> what, were, what, what were the strategies that you used to win Miss Universe? What were the strateg strategies I used to win Miss Universe? OK, this is actually a great question, and I want to tell you something. I used visualization a lot during that time, and I also was obsess obsessed, I'm, I'm really saying the word obsessed, with knowing and researching as much as I possibly could about the Miss Universe pageants. I mean, if I was going to compete at Miss Universe, I had to know everything there is about it, right? I didn't want to leave anything to chance. So I would sit there, and every single day, I would put on old Miss Universe pageant tapes, Yes, we had VCRs back then. <laughs> I actually used a tape and a VCR. And I watched all the pageants that I could get my hands on. And I studied. I studied every winner. How did they walk? How did they answer questions? How did they act? I even went as far as studying winners' reactions when they were called into the top 15, when they were called into the top 10, when they won. And I practiced those reactions. I remember myself thinking, OK, when I'm on stage and I'm I get called into the top 15. There's all of these ladies standing, and there's 81 of us or something like that. What is my reaction going to be when I get called into the top 15? And I practiced it. I did the victory pose. <laughs> so I remember when, on the actual day, when they actually called Canada into the top 15, and you can watch it on, on YouTube, on the video, I go like this. I go like this. <laughs> To the center of the stage, yeah, Canada. Then I thought, how am I going to react when I get called into the top 10? And I had another idea, I'm going to hug myself. <laughs> Again, when I got called into the top 10, you can see it on video, I just go like this, go up to, towards um, the front of the stage. And it's funny because I remember visualizing so clearly how I'm going to react and how I'm going to feel when I get called that it actually became like second nature. I wasn't even thinking about it. When I did get call, called, it was just automatic. I reacted the same way as I visualized. And it's amazing how visualization really paid off for me. I never once visualized getting crowned because I felt like that's something really out of my control. There's only one person who can win out of 80 or 90 contestants, so I didn't want to put so much pressure on myself. The only thing I wanted to do and my goal was to get as far as I possibly could, and top five would have been just enough for me. But because I continued my visualization and I just continued to be in that present moment and enjoy and send positive vibes and positive energy when I was competing, it took me all the way. So, thanks. <laughs> Hi, Hiram. Hi, Madam. <laughs> hello, hello. Yep. Hi, Natalie. Hi. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, this question is for my wife, who okay. is the most beautiful woman in the world. <laughs> of course. And, and for the other women here, um, because you obviously look outstanding. Uh, you've had a child. I don't know how old you are, but 
You look <laughs> fantastic. Let's just uh, leave it at that. And uh, you know that I know that you know that thoughts become things, especially with the body, right? Especially with uh, your looks. A person with positive thoughts and positive energy has an amazing aura like you do. And, but at the same time, there's habits of exercise, of the foods you eat, um, and I know for women, the cream you use and things like that. And I was wondering if you would be willing to share, for, again, for my wife and for the women here, <laughs> For instance, uh, how often do you work out? Okay. Uh, what kind of exercises do you do? Um, sleep routine, and then okay. diet. <laughs> but, and also, like, do you use a cream? I know maybe this is. Do I a, use a, what? A, I don't know if this is a branding infringement or something like that. But we're, I'm curious what you use. <laughs> so. Uh, Are you sure you're not asking for yourself? Well, I use La Mer. <laughs> so I use La Mer, but I'm older. Uh, my <laughs> wife is still quite young, but it's 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 yeah okay. for me it's for me too as well. All right, Definitely. all right. Well, I, I I get the point. I get the point. Thank and thank you for all those compliments. I appreciate it. Um, well, I would have to be there here for a really long time in order for me to tell you all of my routine. Uh, but I have to say, I don't obsessively exercise. I've taken it upon myself now to religiously do yoga, and this is what I do every day now. After I finish my meditation, I either go to a yoga class for one hour, or I just do a simple sun salutation series for the 12-step one for just 10 minutes. But uh, whenever I can, I do exercise. I believe that exercise is one of the most important things for our health. But if we're talking about how to manage our weight and how to stay in shape, I think the most important thing is your portion control and how much you eat. So at the end of the day, there are no secrets. Your body takes in as many calories as it needs, and if you eat too much, you're gonna gain weight. If you eat too little, you're gonna lose weight. There are no secrets. Certainly, there's some people who have metabolism disorders and certain health conditions that could prevent them from that, but as a general rule of thumb, it's what you eat is what shows, right? So I try to limit my portion sizes, and I try to eat healthy. I don't limit myself to any kind of food that I eat. I eat everything I want in moderation, and I practice body awareness. I think everything starts with the mind, right? And if you are not equipped with your mind to be healthy and to be fit, it's not going to happen no matter what you do. So you have to be ready with your mind. You have to, first of all, know exactly how much you want to weigh, Remember my little sketch? I had my <laughs> number, my magic number that I went away. So you have to know what is your goal, and you have to visualize yourself reaching that goal. Visualize yourself getting up every day, going to the gym. Visualize yourself eating proper, sensible meals every single day. Make a plan, make a list of what exactly I'm going to eat, or make um, sort of um, rules for yourself. Like, I'm not going to eat after 8 p.m., if that's your rule. Or I'm not going to eat any sugar this week. Whatever it is. And sometimes I make those rules and sometimes I don't. But at the end of the day, it's all about that balance, right? It's finding that delicate balance in your life. Um, but I definitely recommend using visualization, doing some routines for yourself, like exercise and eating, and then continue doing body awareness because what happens is when we eat, we think that I'm still hungry. When actually you just probably ate too fast and you're not really hungry anymore. It's just a habit. So practicing body awareness is really important when it comes to maintaining good body weight, eating mindfully, actually tasting your food and not being on your phone at the same time or watching TV, and also just uh, realizing when you're full and actually telling your body, I'm full now, I'm done, and then going ahead and doing another activity. So those are the kinds of things that I do. Hopefully that answers your question. What brand of cream? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay, no, I'm not going that way. <laughs> yes, please. On the way, success may people hurt by um, words and teasing us. So how we uh, forgive, uh, the best way to forgive them so that I focus on our aim? 
I heard the second part, but I didn't hear the first part of the question. Men, how to forgive uh, others who, who may be hurt by words on the way of success, just teaching you or how, just, just. Um, so is the question how to forgive others yes, easily? Yes. How to forgive others easily. I think that when you hold grudges and when you hold resentment towards other people, you have to realize that the only person that you're hurting is yourself. So the best way to forgive others is to allow that realization to come that you're not responsible for other people's actions. You're only responsible for how you feel. And that's the only thing that you can control. You can control your thoughts, and with your thoughts you can control your feelings. So drawing a line between the other person and yourself and drawing that boundary their actions and whatever they do should not affect how I feel and how I think. Remember, taking control. And this is something that I talk about a lot in my book, which I talk about building your emotional intelligence, learning how to control your thoughts, learning how the thoughts are making you feel. And it comes with practice. And I also think that meditation helps with that. Because the moment, but you say you meditate, right? Does that help you with that? When I was right, how can he or she can tell me I was wrong, etc. comments on me. And I tell myself, when I was right, how can I don't forgive himself or herself because I am right. Ah, <laughs> I see what you're saying. You have to remember that the other person may think that they're right while you think that you're right. But what their opinion is, is none of your business. Okay? The only business that you have is the business of what goes on in your life. So you cannot allow anybody else to take away that energy, to take away your positive thinking, to take away your peace of mind. And the only thing you can do is just be with yourself, meditate, try to clear your mind, and that meditation, the more you do it, the more balance and peace is going to come into your life. So I hope I'm answering your question, because I'm not quite sure if I understood the question. But really, your own only job in your life is to only control yourself and your thoughts. Everything else is out of your control. So don't even worry about it. Anybody else? Actually, my time is up. So <laughs> I have a big red flashing sign that my time is up. So thank you, everybody, so much. Thank you for listening. See you again. <laughs> well done, Natalie. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Well done.